yeah uh, good afternoon all of you uh, in this class uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the most important orders isoptera and also thysanoptera which are coming under uh, hemi metabolous insects nothing but we call them as a exotergols and in this class actually we are actually trying to discuss about the important taxonomic characters of a very very smallest insects i can't show now because i don't have those insects those insects are very very small we will be keeping in the solutions unlike the grasshoppers unlike the cockroaches unlike the praying mantids i can't show in this video because they are very very small and uh, probably you must be seeing the termites the white ants termites ante telugulo man ochcheda purugulu anta whenever you see any kind of old newspapers which are stored for a long time then also if you, have, if you can discuss with your mother if you can the father you can just share a experience that how these termites looks like usually you see these termites in all the wooden wood works at your home and sometimes you also see these termites nearby your home and also in the fields termites are nothing but white ants they are in white color look like ants but actually they are not ants there's a very very big difference between the ants what you see the black color sometimes red color and these isopterans if you remember we also had a discussion about the moniliform antennae when we discussed about the antennal modifications the bead like moniliform antenna is a very very important taxonomic character as per as isopterans they are very common they are terrestrial and most importantly they eat the wood materials they don't eat the green plants they only eat the dead wood because they eat the dead wood they also have a wonderful system inside for the digestion of the cellulose they are highly destructive they are highly destructive to the buildings and very irritating if you get the termites at your home you will never sleep peacefully because these termites are disturbing everything they will be there inside the wood materials in the kitchen in the bedroom in the bathroom wherever and night time they actually they, even the day time they keep traveling from one place to another place and sometimes they also form some kind of galleries and they will be disturbing they will be eating away everything so that's how knowing about these isopterans is extremely important and as far as the agriculture is concerned they there is a very serious pest in the sugar cane and other and the other plants and even the avenue trees the big trees big trees and especially in the gardens like mango gardens it's a big problem it's not only a problematic to the residential and commercial buildings but also very very problematic at the farm level field level and that's the reason it's extremely important to understand about the taxonomic characters of the insects belongs to isoptera they are all called as a white ants or the termites and in this class we will try to understand about the important taxonomic characters of the termites which belongs to order isoptera further after this we will also try to understand another important order called thysanoptera thysanoptera and the common name of the insects belongs to thysanoptera we call them as a thrips they are also very very small minute 
and they will be destroying the crops like anything. Though they are very small, they do a very, very huge economic losses for the crops and also plants. Besides, they are also involved in transmission of some diseases. So in this class, we are trying to understand about the importance of the two orders. One is about Isoptera, the second one is Thysinoptera. And besides this, we will also try to understand the important taxonomic characters, important taxonomic characters. So with this uh, brief introduction, so I will just make some wonderful pictures for all of you to understand these things in a better way. Yeah, in this class, as I told you, it's lecture 24. So we'll be discussing about the important taxonomic characters of Isoptera. Yeah, this is the picture. It's very self-explanatory. Iso means equal. Terra means beings. The insects which have a huge equal size beings and the wing variation is everything is same as well as the four wings and hind wings and most important the size of the four wings and hind wings are same but as a matter of fact in fact you don't see these adults very commonly you don't see these winged adults very commonly to understand the wing variation wing sizes and all but very rarely you'll be seeing especially at the onset of the monsoon if you remember and at the onset of the monsoon the winged adults will come out and they will be roaming, hovering around the lights and again they lose the wings. These smaller insects which are crawling on the grounds so after losing the insects, you will be observing at your hostel, at your home, at your places. And this is the winged one that's not commonly seen, not commonly seen. Whereas the wingless Adults, the wingless adults you'll be seeing, wingless nymphs and adults will be seeing very commonly inside the dermatoria, inside the buildings. There are different kinds, for example, you see the winged one here and also you see the wingless ones here and also you have it. You must be seeing this kind of adults with very, very well-developed mandibles. So they have a different kinds of types of insects. Winged, wingless, even the wingless, there are different, two different kinds or three different kinds. It means that there is a kind of polymorphism in the uh, isoptera. So the habitat is uh, common in tropics, tropical region. It's very, very common. And the habit, the food habit is they are actually eating in the dead wood. They are actually eating in the dead wood of any kind. They are actually economically very important because they do a lot of damages to the buildings. They do a lot of damages to the woodworks at the home, at the kitchen. And also they do a lot of damages for the plants, like especially in the sugar cane. And the size is very, very small and they are very, very soft bodied. Probably if you see next time, now after going through this lecture, you'll understand how these termites looks like. And try to catch hold, and they're very, very soft body. They're very, very soft. All these adults actually, whatever you see, they are adults, but they are meaningless adults. They're very, very soft body and very, very small. And the head is prognathus. And the most important character is some of these cats. They, they have a wonderful cat system, like division of labor. So some of these insects which are involved in the defensive purpose, protecting the other family members, protecting the entire home. The home of these termites is called termatoria. So for protection of the home from other enemies, for protection of all other working insects, some of these insects, they have a highly developed defensive system and that defensive system is either by the wonderful mandibles or other with a very, very characteristic feature called frontal gland. So they have a gland here, 
so they have a frontal gland here and this frontal gland will secrete some kind of solution and which is thrown when they are disturbed with the enemies the compound is for is very very developed in the winged forms but highly reduced in the wingless adults wingless adults the antenna is morally formed bead like structure you can see the antenna here so there's a bead a string of beads string of beads and that string of beads kind of arrangement is called a morally formed antenna the mouth parts are highly developed chewing and manipulate type and chewing and biting because that they have to chew they have to bite they have to cut the dead wood it's as simple as like this because they depend on the dead wood material as a food material so they have a wonderful well developed mandibles for cutting for grinding and for also chewing and eating and the prothorax is uh, usually ah. head really movable yes as far as the wings i told you there are different forms as far as the termite adults only the adults will bear the wings in any insect only the adults will have a wings and in this case here based on the presence of the wings the insects are classified into three categories so what is aterus means wingless adults so there are certain adults which are wingless and believe me the winged adults are more in number if you find any corelli of the termites so wingless adults and there are very very few numbers with little developed wings they are called as brachypteris but you don't find them they are very very few in numbers and the third category is winged adults winged adults that's what you see in the top picture winged adults are very few in numbers but they come in swarms sometimes they come in swarms there will be many number and these winged adults after emergence after they become adults from the names and they will come out of the colony and they will be usually going out near the usually they go near to the lights and after some time they lose the wings immediately so the winged adults as far as the winged adults are concerned the winged adults if they are wing so there will be two pairs of wings four wings and hind wings are similar size is similar the everything is similar even the variation is also similar so they have a similar kind of four wings and hind that the reason these insects are coming under isoptera iso means similar and the legs they are short and stout and tarsi is four segmented they are actually they, they go very fast they go very fast and anal tarsi is short and stout and these are the important taxonomic characters as far as the insects the termites which belongs to the order isoptera three important characters they are very very specific as far as isoptera one is the monely form antenna the monely form antenna is in which is very very specific and the second character is as far as the wings are concerned so there are three kinds of adults aterus brachypteris and terus means winged adults if they are wing the wings will be similar the four wings and also hind wings will be similar there is no change there is no difference at all and the third important character is the mandibulate mouth but they have very very well developed mandibulate mouth parts and in some insects of course in some insects they have a frontal lay the frontal gland so there is a gland here on the head and that gland is useful for secretion of some materials to actually to get away from the enemies so that frontal gland is only present in some of the sterile insects that we will be discussing in detail so the adders so the adults can be the adults i'm talking there is a egg there is a nymph and there is an adult stage the life cycle the nymphs are very very small and you don't see the nymphs actually they are very small and living inside inside the dermatorium but adders they are very very active they are very very active you will see only the adders if you look into the dermatorium and if you look any termites at your home and all these things are adults but they are wingless 
they are wingless. But however, the adults can be classified into three categories. One is primary reproductives, which are the ones with highly developed reproductive system, highly developed reproductive system, either in male or female. And the secondary one is secondary reproductives. That's what I told you, the brachy, brachy terrace with a little wing. And the third one is sterile cats. So these sterile adults, they are adults, wingless, and also they are sterile. They don't have a, any reproductive, well-developed reproductive system. They can't reproduce. So sterile cats are many, many number in, if you look into any termatoria, and 95% are sterile cats. They are actually busy in other jobs. The primary reproductives are male and female, a king and queen. So they are only meant for the reproductive purposes. So they have a wonderful, well-developed reproductive system. And also they have wings. And also they have wings. That's what you mean. Uh, if you see any swarms or winged adults, they are the actually uh, ones, the adults ones which are important for them for the colony multiplication. So if you see the life cycle here, the eggs, eggs are laid by the queen or the female and the eggs will become nymph and from the nymph, nymph is the immature and which is common, but when they become adult from the nymph and they are segregated and they are differentiated based on their work. They are differentiated into different castes. They are differentiated into different forms based on the work it should do. So they can be differentiated into adult, like the last mount of the nymph is leading to the adult. So the adult can be a winged one and the adult can be a supplementary one and the adult can be a working one. So there are winged adults, wingless adults. The winged adults become queen or king, whereas the wingless adults, they're actually used for the colony purpose. Either they, they can be classified as a workers because they are busy working, collecting the food and keeping the thermotoria very clean. And all these kinds of works are done by the workers. Whereas the soldiers, they're actually protecting the thermatoria from the enemy. Soldiers means they should have some kind of weapon. The weapon can be a mandibles, highly developed mandibles for killing the enemies. The weapon can be some kind of fontanel. So this, this is how we can classify these adults into three categories. One is primary reproductives, secondary reproductives, and sterile cats. Let us try to understand about what is primary reproductives. So the primary reproductives are the winged ones. Remember, the primary reproductives are the winged ones. They are darker in color. You can see here, they are darker in color. Sexually highly developed. The reproductive system is highly developed. And the fully developed, they have a fully developed wing and wonderful eyes. And the wings are similar. The four wings and also hind wings are similar. So the males are usually smaller in any insect for that matter. Take any insect, the females are bigger in size and males are smaller in size. So they, they leave the colony in swarms. They leave the colony in swarms in a bigger number. And these swarms, so the males and females, they get united. And uh, they usually lose immediately the wings. So the female, you can see the most important character is the female. So once they mate and this female, this female go into the car, they, they bring the car, they get into the place and this female, they have an umpteen number of eggs inside and the size is very, very big compared to the other adults. I can see the size here. The size is really big and thousands of eggs are inside and you don't realize it is a male, it's a female, it's a bigger one, it's an adult. No. It's a very big, it looks like a larva, frankly speaking. So you take a larva of any caterpillar, any, any lepidopteran, and you to look into the larva or caterpillar of any lepidopteran, it's a big size. Actually, the queen, the female, and it looks so big compared to the other termites. Compared to other termites are smaller, whereas this one is very big. And that stage is called physogastric. You should remember this term. 
that stay the queen attaining enormous stage figures after mating and that obesity the increase in the size of the body increase in the size of the stomach that that gives looks like a actually you can see here so this is entire abdomen actually the head is that the head becomes very small head becomes very small and thorax becomes very small the abdomen size enormously increases and that stage is called phizogast and the second category of the adult is brachypterus brachypterus and they are uh, short and uh, with reduced wings and they are very very small in number you don't find them unless until you are a scientist and trying to identify otherwise you can't recognize them they have a smaller eyes but this as a secondary reproductive basically they keep some they keep some termites on a standby they keep some uh, termites on a standby for whether to reproduce or not everything is dictated by the queen so so these kind of insects with the less developed wings and darker in color they are standby actually you don't see them and these standby insects are called secondary reproductives basically they will supplement the queen in building the colony if at all required otherwise they don't reproduce if they require to mate or the both female and male uh, they they mate and they the queen uh, will try to build the colony and basically these supplement rep reproductives you don't see them in the colony and they are required only they are required to build the colony or supplement the colony with the queen and the third one is very important the wingless ones the third one is very important the wingless ones so the wingless ones the wingless one the sterile cats so they can be classified as a workers and also soldiers the wingless forms are two types but if you see only these things when you look into the termitoria when you look for the termites you will only see these wingless adults the wingless adults are two types one is workers and another is soldiers workers means they are working so they are working and they are actually they they will be helping the building of the nest and they will be helping the making the pathways they will be helping for making the tunnels they will be helping for collecting the food they will be helping for giving the food to the all other termites it means they are the busiest they are the busiest they are the busiest cast they are the busiest cast as per the termitology is concerned the workers are wingless adults apterous adults and they are pale in color so they are white in color they are pale in color and lack compound eyes they don't have a compound eyes actually they don't have a compound eyes and they collect the food and they feed the queens they feed the soldiers they feed the newly hatched egg ones or the names and they build up the nest they build up the passages pathways the roads they build up the tunnels they build up the termitoria they build up the house they are the busiest they are the busiest and uh, they they actually form the bulk of the colony more than 90% of the colony are uh, occupied by these workers and the second the uh, wingless category is man, uh, the soldiers the second wingless adult category is soldiers soldiers means they have a duty of protecting the colony there are two kinds of soldiers actually based on the development and the one soldier is called mandibulate soldier and the mandibulate soldier you can see here they have a highly developed mandibles mandibulate soldiers you can see here in this picture very clearly in the antenna also it's a moniliform antenna but in this case uh, they have a very very enlarged greatly developed head the characteristic feature as far as the adults of the mandibulate soldiers is called they have a very very big highly developed head and highly skeletalized very tough head and they have a very tough mandibles and these mandibles are used for protecting uh, these colonies from other animals so the most important character you can see in the left side picture so these are the soldiers they, they, these are the actually they will be keep busy and uh, these are actually uh, all these workers you can see the workers there are many number but as far as the soldiers are concerned one soldier which is called mandibulate soldier they have a very enlarged head and highly developed head 
and a very highly skeletalized head with wonderful mandibles wonderful mandibles and these mandibles are used for protecting the colony from the animals other enemies and the second category is nasu type the second category is nasu type they are also soldiers actually they are a different kind of soldiers you can see here the soldier they have a nasu type so nasu type soldiers will have a prolonged head you can see the head is prolonged into a narrow snout like structure and the most important character is they have a very well developed fontanelle and from which a sticky secretion is released and to actually to kill to get away from the intruders or the other uh, enemies so they have a very very highly developed frontal gland and also they have a nasu to kind of uh, a prolonged head here a prolonged head and this prolonged head will also secrete the sticky solutions and also they have a frontal gland will also secrete some kind of poisonous materials the mandibles are highly reduced they don't have a well developed mandibles it means so you remember there are three types of three types of termites you will find in any colony one is winged adders i'm talking about the adders the winged adders the winged adders uh, can be a queen or they make king and they can develop into a very very wonderfully highly developed reproductive system and these winged adults only can mate together and form the colony for babies and the queen the size will become so big and that particular phase is called physogastric and the second one is brachypterus less developed wings and they are very very less in number you don't find them and the brachypterus are something like a supplementary reproductive and they they will be uh, they will be serving as a stand by male female when the when they require to reproduce and build the colony uh, and then they will mate and the female will develop and also lay the eggs but that's a rare happening and the third important character is third important caste and third important is apterus wingless adults the wingless adults are many in number in any colony and the wingless adults can be three types wingless adults can be three types two types basically so the wingless adults can be a workers workers are very soft and workers don't have a well developed eyes and workers are very busy in doing all kinds of works of the colony and the second category is soldiers and again in the soldiers there are two kinds of soldiers one is mandibular soldiers and the nasu soldiers the more mandibular soldiers will have a well developed mandibles and the head is so large so big highly skeletalized very very tough and the second category is nasu nasu means a long uh, head the head is developed into long snout kind of structure and the, it actually secretes some kind of uh, sticky materials and also they have a very very well developed frontal gland frontally and that frontally is used for secretion of some poisonous material so that the nasu soldiers the nasu soldiers so they have a two important characters one is head is prolonged into a snout like structure and the second is frontal gland the mandibles are actually reduced and offset so there are three kinds of adults there are three kinds of adults if you see in any kind of termitoria so finally before we close as far as the discussion about the important character taxonomic characters of the insects belongs to order isoptera they are nothing but termites there are three important characters i repeat the one is the most important is they have a moniliform antenna they have a bead like string of bead like antenna the moniliform antenna which is very important and uh, if the adults are having wings if the adults are having wings the wings are similar the four wings and also hind wings are similar the four wings and also hind wings are similar but actually the winged adders are very very rare only if they come in swarms to build up the new colony and otherwise if you see any colony most of the colony every colony is actually occupied by the workers workers are more than 90% but also and also along with the workers the most important caste are soldiers there are two kinds of soldiers one is mandibular soldiers and another one nasu soldiers mandibular soldiers will have a well developed mandibles which are useful for catching the uh, enemy or uh, cutting the enemy 
and they have a very well developed head, highly stereotyped and very dark in color compared to the workers. And the second one is nasut kind of soldiers. Nasut mean nasut. They have a uh, head long anteriorly, and that also can secrete some kind of sticky materials. And besides that, they also have a frontally, which can act, which can actually produce some kind of uh, poisonous materials. So we will actually try to see some of the videos then to understand better. So how they look. This is the uh, this is the commonly appearing symptoms you can see on the plants. When you plant, see within our college, you can see many of the plants are actually infested with this kind of termites, and also in uh, crops like sugarcane and uh, field crops like sugarcane, you can see some of the sugar because sugarcane has a dried material that there is a uh, there is always a chance of termite infestation. Now we will see some two videos to understand uh, the termite colony in a better way. And I will say, yeah, you can see here many number of termites, many number of termites, and also you can see the wonderful antenna, wonderful antenna, and that antenna is a, yeah, yeah, wonderful antenna and uh, a moniliform antenna. You will see many, many number of termites. It's actually a camera is uh, taken into the uh, near to the colony. So these are, this is very commonly found. Uh, uh, colonies, you can see. Yeah, you, here you can see there's a lot of nasut, nasut kind of. Actually, nasut and mandibulate, nasut and mandibulate soldiers always live at the boundary of the colony, the boundary of the territory because they want to, they actually, they be just like a border security force, BSF Jawans. So their uh, mandibulate and also nasut type will be actually uh, in the border of the colony. Because inside the colony, inside the territory, all babies are there, and also all the entire colony population are inside. Because to protect the colony, so these uh, mandibulate and nasu type of soldiers will be actually surrounding here the colony. So many number of like more than ninety two percent of the colony are the workers, are the workers, and these workers actually they will be doing many jobs. Like you can see, these workers are busy. They are pale in color. They are pale in color and uh, they keep on doing and they'll be doing all the work. They, they will cut the food, they will actually feed the mother, they will actually feed the queen, they will be feed the you know, soldiers, they will be collecting all these materials. So workers are the busiest and the most number uh, as far as any territory is concerned and they will be busy. And here actually in this video they are trying to show so how these workers actually uh, uh, because uh, they, they are trying to get the fecal matter and the fecal matter will have a lot of uh, microbes organisms which are helping the termites for uh, uh, digestion of the cellulose. So cellulose is the very commonly, that's the most important carbohydrate which is found in uh, uh, dead wood materials and uh, insects should have a, a wonderful system. And this we, if you remember, we have discussed when we have discussed about the digestive system. The termites have a wonderful system. Uh, for the digestion of the cellulose, and the cellulose are digested by uh, the cellulase, and the cellulase are not being actually synthesized by the insect. The cellulase are synthesized in the insects in the in the, uh, in the colony in the actually digestive system of the uh, termites with the help of microbes. So that's what in this uh, video they are going to show, and you can basically I just brought this video to see the moniliform antenna and also the mandibles and the color, and the color. So they will be busy in building this. You can see here, they are actually trying to build the colony with uh, getting the mud from other places and uh, keep on building the colony. And, uh, and this actually, this is the place, this is the entrance of the colony. This is a place where you can see many number of soldiers, uh, either mandibulate or nasu tank of the soldiers. Very important characters about the uh, most important characters about the mainly from mainly from and uh, I, I will again uh, show you the next video. Yeah, here you can see the termitoria. This is the house of the termit. They build the house actually. They build the house on the above the ground and also below the ground, and also they build the house uh, in your own house. So here you can see the number of uh, termites. Actually, this video is basically 
to show you the female, the queen. The queen, queen, I told you the queen is, a, the, the size of the queen increases enormously. They have, a, the queen will have a thousands of millions of eggs inside, inside the, so you can see here, so these are the eggs, these are the eggs actually, which are being laid by the queen and you can see many number of workers, they just keep on going and uh, so yeah, they are the workers and this is the queen, this is the queen, such a big, just like a Bahubali, so very big, very big, very big, the female grows to a large size and unbelievable, whereas all other adults you can see, they are just roaming nearer to that, mostly they are the workers, these are not the workers, they are also adults, but the wingless adults, you can see the size difference between the workers and also queen. Queen is just like a Tathodhaja, queen is just like a big uh, Bahubali and it, see, you can see almost like you know, how many eggs it lays, like uh, how many eggs, it lays uh, millions of eggs, almost like in a year it can lay something like many, many. So, and uh, yeah, see, such a damaging thing. And that's how it's very important for all of us to learn about the termites. Because they, they don't, you don't see them in a common life, but however, when they live in the colonies inside the dead wood and inside the, in, inside the soil or above the soil, uh, you can also see here, this is uh, uh, the soldiers, the mandibulate soldiers with the big head, the mandibulate soldiers with big, yeah, you can see. The mandibulate soldiers with big head and they're actually protecting here. They are actually protecting the colony, they are actually protecting the colony, they are actually protecting the queen, they are actually protectors. And there are two kinds of uh, soldiers, one is uh, mandibulate soldiers and also nasu soldiers. So with this, so we will end and also we will try to understand, we will try to understand the difference. Because when I call them as a white ants, you should understand the differences between white ants and the ant. The biggest difference is the white ants antenna is a moniliform antenna and whereas the ant the regular ant, what you say, it is the elbow or uh, geniculate antenna. We call them as a geniculate antenna. And the second important is the entire body, like abdominal segments are similar and the abdominal segments are stout. Whereas if you look into the abdominal segments, the first abdominal segment is actually some kind of petiole kind of structure and it's actually constricted. So the thoracic segments and the abdominal segments are separated with some kind of constrict, some kind of petiole kind of thing. And the third important character is the wings. The wings are the same in size in the isoptera. The four wings and also hind wings are same, whereas the winged ant, even, so all the ants, what you see, they are not the wing, they are the wingless ants actually. Similar to the termites, they also have a different forms, winged adults and wingless adults. But generally what you see, they are all wingless adults. But however, they also have a winged adults. So as far as the wings of the adults are concerned, the four wings are bigger in size, and the small wing, uh, the hind wings are smaller in size. That's the biggest difference. And another important difference is all these termites, isoptera, they belong to order isoptera, whereas the ants, they belong to order hymenoptera. Hymenoptera means it is actually a holometabolous insect. It means they have an egg larva nymph and adult. The egg larva pupa and adults. Egg larva and pupa and adults. Whereas in case of termites, they have an egg nymph and adult. So there are three stages in the life cycle. In the end, they have a four stages in the life cycle. Egg, larva and pupa and then adults. So you will be seeing only the adults outside. So all the ants, what you see in the outside, they are the adults. You don't see the larvae because the larvae are very, very small. So these are the important differences as far as the white ants and ants. So white ants, they are white in color. They are very soft bodies. Ants, they are black or red in color, but the body is very, very tough, highly sclerotized. And the white ants, antenna is moniliform, bead-like, whereas the ant antenna is a geniculate type. And again, the body, body is as far as the thoracic segments, abdominal segments are concerned, they are very, very uh, stout, safe, and the bigger in size. And whereas the ant is concerned, the abdominal segments, you can see there's the thoracic and abdominal segment, and they are separate with the constant, it's a first abdominal segment. And as far as the wings are concerned, the four wings and hind wings are, if they are weak, the four wings and hind wings in the white ants and the termites are similar and shape, everything, size, shape, everything is same. 
whereas the ants, the fore wings are bigger in size and the hind wings are smaller in size. So in the termites, they have a three stages, egg, nymph, and adults. As far as the ants are concerned, they have four stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. So these are the important differences as far as the termites and ants. With this, so we finish the discussion as far as the insects belongs to the order Isoptera. Now we will enter into the next one is called Thysanoptera. Thysano means fringed. Terra means wings. So fringed wings, the insects with fringed wings. In fact, it is very, very difficult to, to see the wings of the crypts. So the common name of the insects belongs to Thysanoptera. We call them the crypts. They are actually very small and you don't see with the naked eye generally unless until they are flower thrips. So this is how the thrips look like. They are very, very small. You can see the wings here. They are a fringed wings. They are the fringed wings. They have a two pairs of fringed wings and very difficult to see the naked eyes. They are very, very commonly found in all the plants. The best example for it, I can show you. Suppose you take a flower, just go to nearby, uh, just within your home, just take a flower and keep a white paper below the flower and just tap the flower. You'll be seeing a black color insects. They are nothing but thrips. That is the reason we usually call them as a flower. Thrips. They are very commonly seen in the flowers something. And we call them as a flower thrips. You can see here in this video, I, I try to show some, to bring some nice video so that they can see how small they are and how they look like. They are very, very small. They are very, very small. And this is the adult. This is the adult with wings. They have a fringed wings. They have a fringed wings. Very, very small. And this is the egg laid by the thrips. This egg is a very, very small egg inserted inside the plant tissues. Very, very small egg which is, which is inserted inside the plant tissues. And this egg will become a small nymph. And this egg will become a small nymph. And that nymph will become an adult. And this is the, this is, you can see the small baby nymph which is coming out. And this baby nymph become, become, become bigger nymph. So with the help of molding process, yeah, you can see here. So the small baby nymph is uh, getting into the bigger size through molding. They mold four, four, four to five times and the size become bigger. The size become bigger. And uh, these nymphs and also adults, these nymphs and also adults, they cause a serious damage to the plants. That's the reason we have included in this order into the syllabus. So they, they have a very, very, this is, you can see the nymphs, nymphs have a wing pad. You can see the wing pad here. And this is the wing pad. This is a baby nymph, which has a wing pad here. It's the left and right wing pads. But they are not useful for the flying because they are not developed. Whereas the adults, you can see the adult here. The adult will have a big, well developed, but they don't fly, frankly speaking. Yeah, the wings are not useful for flying. They don't fly. They simply crawl because they are very, very small. And usually you can see these names at nearer to the wheels of the plants. And the biggest problem with these insects is they have a lacerating and sucking type of mouth parts. And they are lacerating and sucking and they gikatamu thagatamu. So they have a lacerating and sucking type of mouth parts. With these, they actually do a lot of uh, damage because they suck the sap from the plant material. They suck the sap from the uh, every every plant material, including flowers also. If you remember, uh, whenever you buy a rose flower, whenever you buy a rose flower, the rose petals will have a white color marking, and that will not fetch you a good price because it is damaged by the tricks. So this is very important to understand as far as the uh, insects belongs to Thysanopter. Look into the life cycle. It is similar to any hemimetabolous insects. They have an egg, they have a nymph, and also adult stage. But the important point is this is the one uh, uh, hemimetabolous order. This is the one hemimetabolous order which have a pupa stage. That's very, very peculiar. This is the one, this is the only hemimetabolous order which have a pupa stage. Egg, nymph, pupa, and adult. They're very, very small. And eggs are laid in deep leaf tissue. In the previous week, we have seen the small egg which is laid inside the leaf tissue. And the nymphs, so nymphs are actually crawling and feeding stages. Even the adults is also feeding stages. The uh, feeding stage, the nymph will become pupa and pupa become adults. 
so it means this is the only members of the exoteric or this is the only members of the hemimetabolus to have developed a pupil stage true pupil stage so now we will try to understand the important characters taxonomic characters of the insects belongs to the uh, order thysanoptera they are highly polyphagous they are very very dangerous they are highly poly though, though they are very small but they do a serious damage to the crop plants and economically important because not only doing the damage by lacerating and sucking uh, sucking the juice from the plant materials and leaves and flowers but also they actually transmit the diseases they actually transmit the it is very very dangerous transmission of the diseases they are the vectors of some of the diseases they are very very small very small you have seen in the video slender and thin and the color is actually either yellow or brown or some are in black color like flower tips they are in black color and the antenna the most important taxonomic characters as far as the antenna is the antenna will have a scansorial as some kind of sensorial structure that is a uh, cone like structure sensorial structure here the antenna the antenna will have a cone like uh, uh, sensory structure which is either third and fourth segment that's the one important taxonomic characters and the compound eyes are conspicuous that you have seen in the previous bit that black color and they have a very less number of ammatidia but the most important character is as far as the ammatidia as far as the mouth parts are concerned the mouth parts we have studied when we have discussed about the various modifications of the mouth parts i told you the mouth parts in the thrips they are lacerating and sucking lacerating and sucking so lacerating means gigatomo sucking means juice tag so lacerating and sucking type of mouth parts are very very peculiar only present in the thrips remember they are only present in the thrips because they are very specific because they have a right mandible which is upset they have only the left mandible it means a gigatomo edaithe undo that laceration is only done with the help of left mandible so that laceration is done only with the help of left mandibles so the, they, they they have a asymmetrical mouth parts because the left mandible is present and the right mandible is absent so the mouth all these other parts like labrum and labium maxillae they come together they form some kind of mouth cone structure and with the help of mouth cone they suck the juices from the leaves and the left mandible is actually used for the uh, laceration or uh, rasping or uh, geek atom and left mandible geek in tarvata mouth cone dwara juices suck chesthe so this is very peculiar that happens only in the thrips so they have a asymmetrical mouth parts because the right mandible is absent because the right mandible is absent and all other mouth parts together they form a mouth cone kind of structure a cone kind of structure and that cone is useful for sucking the sap and the next one is about the wings wings we know very well they have it well, two pairs of wings and the wings are fringed wings you can see here the, that's a very peculiar character and that fringed wings are present in only in insects belong to thysanoptera thrips nothing but thrips legs yes they have a uh, developed eggs and uh, two tarsal segments and the abdomen is uh, usually around 10 to 11 segmented and uh, anal surface is absent in general and the uh, metamorphosis is very very peculiar i told you this is the only hemimetabolous insects which have developed a kind of pupal structure egg nymph and pupa then becomes adults that's the reason so they are very very special uh, very very important to understand the insects belongs to thysanoptera because they not only do the damage they not only do the damage through sucking the sap from the plant materials but also they are involved in transmission of the diseases they are involved in the transmission of diseases and the reproduction uh, by parthenogenesis is very very common remember all these small insects all these smaller insects which are actually have a habit of sucking the juice from the plants they have a parthenogenesis because they are very small and they want to develop more in number and that is possible is just because of parthenogenesis they develop in millions of millions of millions of thrips you will find in one leaf sometimes
And you, if you want to see the trips, and you just have a flower and a piece of white paper, and then you will see a black color, very, very black color, small insect. They are flower trip, and they are the only bigger trips available. But otherwise, all other trips are very, very small, and they will be fine on all these leaves, fruits, flowers, everywhere. And uh, the most important, probably, if you have any, uh, and generally, uh, whenever there is a trips damage, whenever there is a trips damage, because the trips are always on the lower side of the leaf, so always uh, sucking the sap from the lower side of the leaves near the veins, and that the reason leaf become upward curling. So when you see any upward curling curled leaves, it means definitely it has a trips on the lower side. Just tap it and you will see the trips. And that's it. And uh, thank you very much. And in this class, we try to understand about the important characters of the insects belongs to the order Isoptera and followed by the Thysinoptera, which are very economically important and uh, extraordinarily important because uh, they are economically very important. The termites will be doing very serious damage to the building, serious damage to the wood, serious damage to the kitchen, serious damage to the plant, serious damage to the avenue trees, whatnot. So that is the reason it's extremely important to understand about the termites. And the next, another smaller insect is called thrips. Thrips belongs to Thysinoptera. And because we have had enough discussion as far as the Thysinoptera is concerned, the no, number one important character is they have a fringed wings. And another important character is they have an asymmetrical mouth part. These are the two important taxonomic characters you should always remember. So thank you very much. And with this, uh, we end up the discussion. And uh, tomorrow we'll be having a discussion about another uh, order that's called Hemiptera. That's called Hemiptera. And I think with that, so we'll uh, finish uh, the uh, hemimetabolous orders, then we'll move on to the holometabolous orders. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.